Hey guys, I'm Denise. And I'm Lindsay, and we're born this gay. Welcome, welcome. This is Born This Gay podcast. Uh, it's our channel where we like to discuss LGBT content for everybody. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then a little bit of everything in between. I like how that's been your catchphrase now. I know. I, <laughs> it's just fun to say. So, okay. I mean, hey, you say the same thing at the start every time, true, too. True. So, You're it's accurate. about time I came up with something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's um, so, all right, guys. Uh, this episode, we are going to go over like how to be gay for the holidays yeah because i mean holidays are stressful enough so let's let's add being gay on top of that and it's a it's a hot mess yeah so. yeah so we're gonna go through basically uh for i guess you non-lgbt people or semi on the spectrum we're gonna go over just how hard it can be for someone of uh, mm-hmm. our community and then also some tips on how to how to combat the stress and anxiety you're about to feel. Yeah, yeah. Well, take it from us, guys. We, we've been through quite a few holidays being yeah. out ourselves, so we're yes. going to give you guys as much advice as we can. Oh, accurate, yeah. accurate. But first, got a little bit of catching up to do. Yeah, we had some technical difficulties on the last couple episodes. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Denise is very frustrated. Technology likes to spank me every once in a while. Mm-hmm. And just Which is funny because, like, it's your job. I so. know, <laughs> I know. Yeah. On a little bit of lighter news, I got a haircut today. (laughs) I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm feeling myself over here. You guys are in the DFW area. You guys got to go see Shirley. She is the den styles for men. Oh, I love it. Every time I go, she is so LGBTQ plus friendly. Love it. Um, Just such a warm environment. And she has free drinks i think so. you've talked about her on this podcast yeah. before she's the she's a, a woman who just loves to do men's hairstyles mm-hmm. correct yeah. yeah but she does a lot of um women's oh, of course cuts too if yeah. you have short like, hair yeah yeah, just yeah so it. y'all go see her okay yeah she just cut sam's hair so yeah yeah i hooked uh, denise's wife up with yes. her so yes. yeah um i'm sure you guys probably saw on the news lately um that uh, mass shooting that happened in Colorado Springs. Oh yeah, on a darker note. Yeah, yeah, we gotta we gotta talk about this real quick, guys, because this um, it's just the day that it happened is really what sticks with me. Is um, he did it on the eve of Trans Remembrance Day, kind of into the minutes rolling over to the next day. Holy shit! So, so and really... you're gonna go shoot up an LGBTQ plus okay, nightclub. So- I don't I don't know too much about it other than the fact that there's I saw his picture on the news. Guy mm-hmm. looks gross. If mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. do say so myself. Um but yeah, all I saw that he went into an LGBTQ club mm-hmm. at night and then just did a rampage. But yeah, I don't know so it was like eighteen or something that were So five people were killed, Holy unfortunately. Shit. And at least nineteen are confirmed injured. Wow. Yeah, he um the information I was able to gather, he did walk in there with two different firearms, mm-hmm. but only was able to use one before a hero of our community was able to step in. And uh this man's name I definitely had to talk about his Richard M. Fer- Ferio. Fierro? Fierro? Yeah. So I apologize, I butchered that. Wow. But he was an army a fifteen year army veteran who Fuck happened yeah. to be at the club that night with his um family. And he said that he heard the shots start uh, start firing, and he just he went into combat mode. And he's quoted with saying that he knew he had to protect his family, and at that moment, everyone in that club was his family. Oh, damn right, mm-hmm. yeah. So he tackled the gunman. Holy shit! <laughs> took his gun from him what? and okay. proceeded to beat him with his own weapon. Wow! Mm-hmm. Oh, and so he that's... did not hold back. He did not hold back. So that's why the dude looked like shit whenever yeah. he was. Getting oh yeah, booked. he he okay. was in the hospital for like a week. Oh wow! Yeah, like messes rightfully, like very rightfully, if I might add. But fuck. Yeah. All yeah. Right. So well, Mr. I mean, Fierro. he he doesn't consider himself a hero, but I know our whole community sees him as such. He saved countless lives, and you know, it's just I saw I saw a picture of it on uh, Instagram. Someone said. You know, it's kind of mind boggling that an unarmed man can take down a man actively shooting when a hundred cops couldn't do that for school children. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Now Lindsay's getting political. Yeah, but I I had to (laughs) throw that one in there because I'm like, you know what? (laughs) You got a point. But he saved so many lives and we are so grateful for him. Hell yeah. Richard, Richard Fierro. That's Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Go you. You're awesome. Did you see a picture of him? 
I did, yeah. And okay. I mean, I would be scared if that man came running at me. Oh, so, hell yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll throw his picture up here. Yeah. So this man's a hero. Yes. Just so we're aware. We, we love you. Thank you for Thank um, you for your service and protecting community. our community. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Sir. That was actually the most, um, I guess, pressing news because it really sucks whenever we have a shooting in our yeah. community. And it you know, and they're not thing. even they're not even calling it a hate crime quite yet. They're oh, doing a what? lot more investigation, and I'm just kind of like, how do you not see that? <laughs> like, <laughs> the correlation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wow, mm-hmm. especially with all the stuff that we have going in politics. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it has to be. It has. It has to there's be there's no crime. other way. Yeah. yeah, I did a lot more digging on the guy, and he's. He's not a good guy, and he's not something. I'm not even going to say his name because I don't okay. even think it deserves to be said. But um, yeah, we don't need to go into his history. He's just he's not a good guy, and I'm glad he will be locked away for the rest of his life now. Oh, good shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Five dead. I yeah. hope so. I don't yeah. know how Colorado deals with y'all's stuff, but, but uh, y'all y'all keep them y'all keep them behind bars. I'm down. Do you have some happier news? Uh, yeah, for yeah. Us? Okay, yeah, so let's, I do let's, guess. let's flip this around well, real quick. Happy, happier news, yes, but there are some 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 problematic things. So recently, guys, I don't know if you, um, well, obviously you have seen the news. Have you seen Colorado Springs? And it's probably been uh, brought up because when I was doing research, Colorado Springs got brought up for my the Marriage Act, but the uh, the Respect for Marriage Act just passed in the Senate. Well, the bill. The bill passed in the Senate. It was bipartisan too, so it was okay. both. It was one of those bills that finally we worked together, as different sides of the aisle, like we were supposed to all along. But whatever, because we're fine. all the same government uh, yeah. in America. I mean, we're not anyway, in politics, it's okay, so it's fine. yeah, no, don't get political. <laughs> but, <anyway. laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So I copy this from um, from Wikipedia. The Respect for Marriage Act, for those of you who don't know, um, abbreviated as RFMA, is a bipartisan bill in Congress um, to repeal the Defense of Marriage Act. For those of you who don't know what DOMA is, it's basically um, the defense of traditional marriage, right? So okay. where they wanted to uh, take... Husband and wife. Yes. 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 Well, but yeah, so this uh, is supposed to repeal the Defense of Marriage Act and require the U.S. federal government to recognize the validity of same-sex and interracial marriages in the United States and to protect religious liberty. Now, that in itself sounds great. The fact that we just are now putting interracial marriage as something you shouldn't discriminate against. <sighs> that That's Crazy what I me. was like, wait a but, second, did you say it? <laughs> I thought this was just talking about like gay marriage, but no. like we're still on the interracial marriage. Like, yes. oh my gosh, yes. people need to find something new to talk about. Uh, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you even need to address the fact that you shouldn't discriminate a peop- against people. Right. Like, but whatever. Okay. So the things, the problems that I have with the language in this bill. So they're giving it to where if the state passes it, right? Mm-hmm. If your state passes it and it's legal in your state and you get married, that the other states have to recognize it. It has to be federally recognized, right? Which is great. It also gives protection to religious liberty, which leaves room for some steps backwards. Yeah, for sure. Right? Okay, but the fact that you could still, I mean, Going to get married in another state is that is just an inconvenience. Like, true, true. But, but I mean, that's a state back. That's a that's a step backwards from what we have right now. Whereas, right. no matter what, you can if you're married. in Texas, if you're yeah, no matter where you are, um, you can't be discriminated against because you want to get married here. Like businesses aren't supposed to be able to tell you no, no. Just like if I. My, if it was an interracial couple, if, mm-hmm. you know, went to go to the courthouse, the courthouse couldn't say, well, I guess courthouse is the wrong way. If they wanted to get a, uh, um, a venue that wasn't okay with interracial marriage, right now there's protections against that where you can't discriminate against them because they're interracial. This kind of leaves room for, for where them they to can discriminate still against say no, us. If yes. their state allows them to. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's good. It's good that this passed. We're happy. It was a bipartisan bill. Very happy. But it does give leeway for you for I mean, I understand religious liberty. I mm-hmm. get it, you know, First Amendment rights. But I'm also very against discrimination. So to me those shouldn't go hand in hand. Right. No, I, I agree with you. Yeah. But so mm. I feel okay, so like I'm thinking like half a step forward then. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A little stutter. Kind you know? of. Yeah. A little hiccup. 
Well, we're moving. That's that's, <laughs> that, that, that's something like, like that. Yeah, the way uh, we said it in the previous when we were talking about the history, it, it's not the right step, but it's in the direction of that. Yeah, you know the right way. We're not going backwards. Yeah. Yes, I hope not. Not yet. So not yet. right now everything's okay, but as soon as states start outlawing gay marriage, then yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give you an update when, yeah. when that comes around. <laughs> Right. Yeah, well, let's just go ahead and um, hop right into it now. Yeah, uh, Thanksgiving just passed. Yeah. A lot of you, you're about to celebrate. You know, just by the time this gets published, it'll definitely be December. So, you know, the Christmas parties are coming. You have to go to your your work job parties. Yep. You have to go to see family that you sometimes some of you only see like once a year, maybe yeah, twice a sometimes, year. Sometimes, right? yeah. Um, and there's a lot of there's 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 a lot of. Uh, well, yeah, we'll get into it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't um, just say tension. Yeah, yeah, tension. Yeah. So now, currently, though, what do you? How do you normally celebrate your holidays? You see family or local? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, usually for the holidays, um, Thanksgiving is definitely split down the middle, where I spend the first half of the day with my mom, and then we'll go see my dad and then my stepmom's family in the evening. All in one day. All in one day. Okay. It's like we cram it in there. Got you. Yeah. And then, so yeah, very full usually yes. for Thanksgiving. Extremely full. Um, Same dinners twice? No, 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 no. Nice. Because my stepmom's family is um, Hispanic. So, we, you know, we have the tamales and the, the enchiladas and, you know, we just we rice and beans and... Mm, Hell yeah. I'm Hell getting yeah. hungry thinking about it now. But um, <laughs> yeah, then for Christmas, we do um, Christmas Eve with my dad and stepmom's family and then Christmas Day is with my mom. So... Okay. We'll stay with my dad Christmas Eve, wake up Christmas morning, have Christmas morning there, and then go see my mom, and then finish out Christmas with now, my mom. Now, do y'all have a big family that, like, reunites for the holidays? Or? Um, Before high school, we did. But uh, as we got older, like, we started having, like, um basketball events right well, after holidays. Well, because your sister? Or? Well, me. Like, I don't know. For some reason, high school loved to schedule a tournament oh, December yeah. 26th. Every single time. It was always during what, my Christmas what break. Is that? I'm like, what the fuck? What, the day like, after Christmas? What? Yeah, so I, yeah. I, I usually, like, growing up, I would go home uh, okay. back to Minnesota for uh, Christmas and spend it with my grandparents and all my cousins. But since freshman year of high school, I have not been able to go to Minnesota. Gotcha. Is Minnesota your dad's side or your mom? My oh, dad's, dad's side. side. Yeah, okay. my mom's side is in Iowa. So, like, we'll usually make a pit stop because Iowa's on the way oh, to nice. Minnesota. So okay. we'll stop in Iowa, see my mom's family, and then we drive up to see my dad's. That's a whole ordeal. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's like a solid 16, 17 hours in the car. <laughs> Just driving time. Like, of course, we, like, pulled off and stopped and restroom breaks. So, like, all in all, it took us, like, 48 hours to so get there. So you are the part of the family that travels for, or used to mm -hmm. travel for the... Uh, yeah, yeah, for we went the to the family, because all my other family lived in that area, so, I mean, they drove, like, two hours. Got you. Yeah, we had to drive across country. And Thanksgiving, same as Christmas, like, about the same game plan? Uh, Thanksgiving, we always stayed home. It was, we never went uh, up to Minnesota for Thanksgiving. Okay. It was just, growing up, we just stayed at home. So you saw these relatives usually just once a year. And then the summer. So we okay. went up for a summer trip during summer vacation and then during winter vacation as okay. well. Okay, so twice a year. Yeah, twice, twice a year. year. Twice a year relatives. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. about right. Yeah, what um, about you? How do you usually spend your holidays? Jesus. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Over, like, the solid two months. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so recently, now, um, all the children are old. We all have significant others. Yep. So we all have to leave early for Thanksgiving. So now my mother has decided to make it instead of on Thanksgiving, we celebrate ours, our family one, um, a couple of days after, usually the Saturday or Sunday after. Yeah. Yeah. So Thanksgiving for me has now been Sam's family where we see her father in the morning, see her mother in the evening, a lot of drinking both times, mm -hmm. a lot of food, which is great because it's all, you know, it's the same food, but it's done in a different a different style, Way, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, served differently, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Different environment, it takes everything taste different. So, yes, yeah, yes. So I mean, it's really nice. And then the the one with my family gets a little crazy because my family loves to party, especially now that my parents are a lot older. And I guess recently, especially this year, everyone's invited to my family's Thanksgiving. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I, I am going to your family's Thanksgiving. Yeah. 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 You and like 10 other people. Of my yeah. phone, so. <laughs> Her phone's been blowing up all day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
That's nice. Um, and then Christmas. Christmas is used to be one of my favorite holidays. Yeah. That's just work now. Now, as a 33-year-old, I hate Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, you don't even have kids yet. Just no. Wait. <laughs> yeah. Sam's family is huge. So it's already a financial strain, which I'm sure some of you feel me. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and then my family celebrates Christmas always my entire life. We've celebrated it on Christmas Eve. Yeah. And for me back then, when I was a kid, Christmas Day never meant anything to me. A lot of people celebrate like that. The Christmas Day is your recovery from yes. Christmas Eve. Yeah. Um, but recently, since I've been with my wife, her family gets up for Christmas at 6 or 7 a.m. So we have to be at her parents' house by 5 a.m. Right. So that way we can open gifts at six or seven a.m., which is crazy to me because I still celebrate with my family Christmas Eve. Right. So you might as well just not go to sleep. Oh, we basically don't. Yeah, because <laughs> I wouldn't wake up. Because, yeah, yeah, we're we're there at my parents. My parents are big drinkers. Yeah, and, you, you know, know they, conversations get rolling. Yes. yes. Yeah. We're, we're maybe done by midnight if it's a nice early day. And then I go home and it's basically me and Sam preparing for christmas day uh for a couple hours we we go to bed we mess up our hair that's really all you do because you don't sleep no no yeah you just toss and turn yeah thinking about how you have to get up yes very soon and we do that we go to her parents house and when we're there everything's really nice you know we usually there's some baking together i remember one year we like we we crushed walnuts for pancakes or something i mean there's something that's nice i like so you're not just sitting there like thinking about how tired you are yeah Yeah. i have before though (laughs) yeah but no it's usually not that bad but uh yeah yeah so my christmas is very busy yeah all right so here's comes where we can help you guys get through these stressful holidays yeah as i have you just heard denise is already pulling her hair out about it oh yeah (laughs) yeah this year's better though i have convinced my family now that everyone's old and broke right mm-hmm. you know i've been old and broke for eight years uh, there's an eight year difference between me and my sister so oh, wow. yeah. yeah she's finally moved out of the house so she's old and broke there you go right? there you go so yeah. i've convinced them to just do gift cards so that like slashed my christmas bill in half yeah, yes yeah. yes you know. everyone's getting gift cards so yeah. no and then you can just pick whatever you want yes exactly Gift cards are the best gift in my opinion. For those of you who think that gift cards are tacky, I just want you to be aware this generation, love mine, them. millennial and newer, love them. Mm. Love. I don't want you to pick out my my undies. I'd rather you give me a gift card to Victoria's Secret. Let me pick out my undies. Yeah, or just like give me like one of those Visa card gift yeah. cards. Like charge $50 to it and boom, like I can go anywhere. Like I'm hungry a lot, so I can go get food. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't want to be... Uh, singled out to just like Chick-fil-A for a Chick-fil-A gift card oh. or Raisin Cane's or you know all these different places like I want to be able to choose what I want to eat yeah no visas are nice visas. I actually like the other way of I like getting I like when people give me a gift for a certain place because then it makes me go to that certain place you know what I'm saying like, see I like options yeah, okay. yeah well, I like options everyone's different yeah mm-hmm. but yeah gift cards are awesome yeah so don't knock easy them. quick fast good alright Um. so yeah the holidays are pretty stressful guys Already, I'm sweating just talking about it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little warm in here. <laughs> um, but yeah, for your family, just in general, for anybody, planning and getting everyone together, it it takes a toll on you. Um, and there's tends to be, in, especially in big families, there's always at least one family member that you just don't really look forward to seeing. To seeing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I know, especially for the LGBT uh, people, members of our community, uh, holidays can definitely be more stressful than the average person. Um, in 2018, the HRC found that 67% of LGBTQ youth heard that their families made negative comments about LGBTQ people, and only 24% report that they can definitely be themselves at home during the holidays yeah um yeah we're gonna stop right there guys that's a that's a pretty drastic statistic that's awful yeah yeah it's basically saying over half of the people in our community have some type of like they go home they see their family the people that they love Mm -hmm. people that they've grown up their entire life hear negative comments about not necessarily the way they live their life but the way that the members are community have you gotten any a, have you gotten any outwardly negative or have you gotten any passive aggressively negative comments coming from like your family like do they ever say anything about 
don't know, your hair or um, your You know, none that choice. I've necessarily like held on to. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I did sticks. have a, I had a, I had a younger step cousin who like walked up to her dad and within earshot of me pointed at me and say, why does she look like a boy? Okay. So that was kind of like, I mean, she's like five, so I can't, eh, I can't really say anything about it, but I do remember the first time I asked to bring um, my girlfriend at the time to Thanksgiving with, or excuse me, to Christmas with my uh, step uh, mom's family. I asked my dad if it'd be okay. Yeah. He said, yeah, you know, it'd be fine as long as you just don't act like a couple. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. so I think that's the main one that's really stuck with stuck, me. So yeah. I'm just like, really? So you're just asking me to, like, there's nothing more offensive to yeah. me to like to look me in my eye and tell me to not be girlfriends with my girlfriend. For, yeah, just to pretend to be friends. Like, I mean, to me, would have been fine if he's the type of person that would have said that to you if you had a boyfriend. Yeah, and said the same exactly. Thing. Yeah. yeah, like so all these people, you know, who are, you know, have their boyfriends here or have their girlfriends here, like you could be. tell them to be just friends for the day. Why yeah, does it right? matter for me? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah, so I think that's that's pretty much the main things. And I mean, I know I've heard things here and there, but I just, I don't want to hold on to that negativity. Yeah, I don't have anything that my, like my immediate family has said to me at all um not that i can think of at the moment at least for the holidays uh what i i have had friends though um i have we have one particular friend whom i love uh but she got a haircut <clears throat> kind of short it's not even like short short it's like you know probably like ear level right mm -hmm. she got her hair cut a little bit short went home for it was around the holidays times and her siblings mocked the shit out of her you know, said that she obviously she looks like a boy, um, that, you know, it just it doesn't look right. They can't believe she would cut her hair that short, you know. Just, wow. Yeah. Just completely making fun of her. Right. And I do remember. I mean, this is the holidays. You're supposed to be because fa it's about family togetherness and love and. Yeah. And just being happy. And yes. And her holiday was ruined just by her, her choice of hair. I mean, the other part of that statistic that shocked me was that less than a quarter of people in our community, uh, in the LGBT community, can be fully themselves. Like, that's that's one in four, guys. Like, so if you have a group, only, like, a group of ten, only two of you, two or three mm -hmm. of you... Are comfortable with being who you are. In your family. That's that's. And your family is the people who are supposed to love you unconditionally. Yeah, but it's that programming, especially because usually your family is a little bit older. Mm -hmm. it's, um, that, it's that brainwashing. Yeah, I mean, that's so it really sucks. Uh, if you if you feel like you you can't be yourself for the holidays, my sympathies. I've been there, actually, I'm sure. Um, at some point, Lindsay's had some anxieties going to the holidays with yeah. you know, significant others. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, my sympathies and my sympathies, if you hear phrases like uh, like... Can you try not to act gay? Or uh, could you, could, no public displays of affection. Right, right. Or let's just not tell the rest of the family yet. Like, let's oh, keep it between man. us. Yo, my mom did that, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's like, <laughs> <laughs> She's like, let's just keep it between us for now. You know, let's give them time to process it. I don't know if anyone else out there has uh, families who will bring up political issues during the holidays. Oh, man, I just want to shrink in my then chair. If you bring up anything that has to do with LGBTQ plus politics, you'll just get the look like that. That has nothing to do with anything we're talking about here. I'm like, well, it's, you know, civil rights. So. All right. So um, holidays, guys. So it sucks. But for the seventy six percent of you who uh, don't feel like you um, belong ex like completely fully mm -hmm. in your family, like you, I remember I had feelings where I, I had to dress a certain way oh, to make my course. mother happy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was my dad for me. My, oh, okay. My dad wanted me to dress a certain way, and I was it was not me. I would do it as a treat. Like I see the problem with that now. But I would do it as a treat for my mother, like for Mother's Day or whatever. I would actually address him. I'm like, yeah. Mom, this is what I, I'm I like. had occasional days you like did? that where okay. I'd be like, okay, this oh. is the day from. Oh, I mean, his wedding, for instance. Okay. I during his wedding, I had been out for two years. I was dressing how I wanted to dress, but he wanted me to wear a dress at his wedding. Yeah. So I wore the dress for the wedding, 
And as soon as the reception started, I put on a suit. When you get married. Like, literally. <laughs> when you get married, I want you, just just as a joke, you should ask him. Well, I, f- I would feel more comfortable if, if you wear a dress. dress at my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll switch the roles because, I mean, you're going to walk me down the aisle and I'm going to be wearing a suit. Hey! So, yeah. yeah. It works. It, it's going to work. It's traditional, right? Yeah, those pictures would be amazing. <laughs> Okay, I'm uh, sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. Just, he's he's never going to watch either, so. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, I've actually, I, I, that that was one part of uh, getting with Sam that I, ha- I had to put my foot down um, where they asked me, I was like, can, they asked Sam to ask me if I could dress a little bit more like a girl whenever, you know, whenever I came to the family functions. That was actually one of our first arguments. Uh, with me and Sam, because I was wow. I was offended that she would even ask me. She actually asked that. you. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, she was probably just as uncomfortable. So was it like just bringing it up to you, or did she legit ask? So you? my mother uh, mentioned if I mean, do you mind if you just dress? Yeah, wow. that's how that that went, and I was like, oh, because oh. I w- what I was pissed. At, I I thought I thought it might have had like I I think I I did kind of tone it down a little bit. I didn't dress feminine, but I toned down what I wore Mm -hmm. and I thought it had to do with because in my 20s I had somewhat of a um, a college frat boy look going on are you laughing because do I still look like a college frat boy or are you laughing no I just just because I can see it like (laughs) (laughs) okay I can see it all right yeah I totally kind of like a fuck boy I kind of dressed like that Uh, no no I when when I first came out that definitely yeah the the khaki shorts yes yeah yeah. you you want other the lesbians to know yes yes thank you I mean that's still my style so so I thought yeah I mean true accurate I wore a backwards hat for my wedding it was awesome. sure did yeah sure mm-hmm. sure did um so i thought that was the issue i thought it was okay you know we're going to a nice family functions maybe i shouldn't wear a backwards hat maybe i shouldn't wear my you know my bandana or whatever um so i was like okay so i was still in men's clothing but i didn't um no backwards hat no nothing mm-hmm. so i was like okay so this is probably what they meant you know just nice clothes and then her brother comes in like white t-shirt stained backwards hat on like literally anything like i would have been way better dressed yeah but, you know, right like he comes in not giving a fuck and i'm like why does he get to dress like that but i can't cuz he he exactly yeah just cuz he has something between his legs that i don't That's exactly fine. yeah yeah, and then um, like we talked about before, you know, your family could mock you for presenting as your authentic self, where that be making fun of you for cutting your hair. I had no, like I had the instance with the the younger step cousin. It yeah. was the the same Christmas that I showed up with my hair cut. So, you know, I had dressed that way all the other Christmases, but just because I cut my hair, it was it was something completely different. Big deal. Yeah. Or making fun of the way you dress. Yeah. Or telling you to dress with differently. One thing that I feel like all of us do, and I literally just admit it that I, I did, it's like you when you're around family and discussions start to happen or things slip out or, um, I mean, it could be anything. You feel like you need to be the one that behaves or you're the one that needs to, you know, just be shrink. Be quiet and yeah, yeah, not say reserved. anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. Cool. I mean, this is just the ugly part of the holidays for the yeah. LGBTQ community. It kind of sucks. Or um, a big thing for us that kind of also is unfortunate is you you uh, you might present a um, different way than your gender, mm, but mm-hmm. you're still getting the gifts that would be for the gender that you wear like at birth. Like perfume. Yes. Yeah. yeah, like perfume. Yeah. Or makeup. Yeah. I've never worn makeup. Like... Yo, I was a tomboy as a kid, and I hated Barbies, and yet every year I got a Barbie Mm -hmm. every single year. I stopped getting Barbies because I would take my toy dinosaur and eat their heads. I should see advice. Just dismember them. They're so expensive that if you destroy them, your parents aren't going to buy anymore. (laughs) Oh, are Barbies expensive? expensive. Really? Yeah, Yeah, for for a toy doll. Yeah. Like we're talking about over 10 bucks expensive? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I think they're like 25 bucks. Holy shit. For a Barbie. For a Barbie. Okay. Bro, it's plastic. Ah, All right. Barbie. Okay. The money. All right. Yeah. I'm not going to say nothing. Um, But yeah, uh, a lot of us don't get the gifts we want to. We get girl clothes. We get perfume. We get um, maybe earrings. I think I've gotten a a good amount of hoop earrings. earrings Um, I'll, especially coming from um, my dad's uh, side, I'll get 
very like um feminine presenting clothes oh yeah like instead i like button-up shirts but instead i'll get a button-up blouse oh yeah of course i don't like v-necks I like, you know, circle cut shirts and I'll get so many low cut V-necks, like our female style shirts with the sleeves all the way they up They went here. to the junior miss section mm-hmm. to grab mm-hmm. you that Yeah, clothes. yeah, or um, I only wear men's sweatshirts. I get so many female sweatshirts and like they're, they're a different fit, they're a different style, like everything about it is different and they just sit in my closet. Gotcha, yeah, my my parents-in-law for the first like year or two, yeah, they would they would shop at the women's. I mean, it would still be nice dress clothes and I would, you know. Yeah, and that's what like, cause they're nice clothes. Yeah. And I'm just like, if I just, if I wore those, like all the sweatshirts I get, they're all Nike sweatshirts. So wow. they're re- they spend like $60, $70 on these sweatshirts, but I don't wear them because they're not my style. Yeah. I so I'm that. always just kind of like re-gifting them. Oh like, yeah. Hey, yeah. I got a sweatshirt for you. That's a secret hack right there. Mm-hmm. You get a gift. And you don't have to. You don't have to buy something for somebody else. Yeah, just rewrap it. And here you go. Just, are you a, are you a medium? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got the perfect thing for you. Here you go. Yeah. Um. All right, guys. So I mean, those are the little kind of the challenges we have to go to if you're an ally. If you are newly now coming out maybe you're feeling those type of feelings Mm -hmm. Um, questioning it yeah maybe you're stressed because you have to go home or uh better yet if for those of you who are not completely out in your job i know there's some christmas parties that Mm -hmm. we're all about Mm -hmm. to go through i actually dated a girl like that who didn't bring me to her christmas part her her company christmas party because she wasn't she wasn't out to her boss yet oh yeah i was gonna have yeah and it's i mean i would prefer that over getting invited and being like hey we're just gonna pretend to be friends oh yeah i'd rather not go really oh yeah really yeah that's that's like i said that's so offensive to me okay because you're not asking anybody else to just be friends i i feel that yeah i feel that yeah all right guys so for those of you who are about to go through these stressful times holidays just in general are about being together um you do also have to acknowledge that there's room for potential arguments Mm -hmm. or issues um and so i i just i want to cautious you to be prepared ahead of time um it's worth mentioning that the holiday celebrations are never it's not a good time to come out yeah yeah it's just uh we we have said it in uh, some of our previous episodes and i think even uh, like our first episode i think it was our first yeah. episode yeah we said it's it's just not the best time um any other time you could do the day after the holidays if you want but like christmas day you're sitting there with the family you know it's just maybe another time yeah it just i mean I, i'm not saying don't completely be yourself or anything like that. i'm just saying don't blindside yes it's parents. it's not the time to light Your off family. that firework yeah i agree i mean everyone's there to have a good time to be together to be happy with each other yeah, so, I mean, like we said, holidays are stressful enough. If you're going to blindside your family with something like that, it's just going to blow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with that being said, um, I also don't think it's a good idea to blindside um, whoever, you know, your whatever gathering you go to with your partner if mm. they don't mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. right? A good little piece of advice for me is, I mean, ask ask whoever's hosting whatever gathering you are. Do you think it would be appropriate for me to bring my significant other? Yeah. Um, I feel like straight people ask that, too. Is it okay if I bring so-and-so? Yeah. I've, yeah. I've seen it, like, in all holiday movies and yeah. just I've, – I have straight friends, and they have to verify that. Like, you can just bring an extra body, yeah. especially if there's food involved or Accurate. activities. You know, like, how awkward is it sitting there while everybody else is opening gifts and you're just – there yeah like my my parents do a really good job of whenever i um bring my girlfriend over um they'll have a gift or two for her so she does get to participate in everything else oh yeah i mean that and that extra chair at the table like you know if you got a full house coming one extra chair can be a lot to ask yeah so yeah i mean for so for someone who loves i love to host i love to host things and i honestly usually don't care if you bring someone that i don't know typically usually but as (laughs) exceptions there are some exceptions but (laughs) as a host it is logistically good to know who all is planning to come yeah um let's say you have the actually what would you how would you react if you asked your parents hey do you mind if if Issa comes and your parents just outward said no because you have to prepare for that there, yeah. that might be an you option you have to be very very because pre- if you're asking I mean they can say yes or no is an option as yeah well, so. would you still go 
Um, I would heavily consider it. It would it would be something that I would have to sit on and think about myself. But um, I mean, I would definitely inform them that you know I I understand your decision in this, but I want you to know that this may affect my decision on whether or not I want to attend the festivities as well. Especially if it's someone that, you know, you've been with for a while. Oh, yeah. And, like, you know, you're married or you're on the way to it. Like, and they're not comfortable with them being around the holidays. Then, I mean, you're starting a new life with this person. They're your family. So celebrate the holidays with them. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, don't be afraid to inform them that, you know, if if they decide not to let your significant other come, that's fine. Um, however, this this might affect me not coming yeah yeah i'm just i'm just gonna be straight up with you like yeah. like they have the option to say no you have the option to not go yeah you have to think about your mental health like that's a big thing if if it's gonna be more anxiety for you to be there without your significant other then i highly recommend you just, you just stay, stay home. home yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah i mean in the end the holidays are just about you know getting together and having a good time so get together with the people that you have a good time with agreed agreed um so yeah uh yeah also we recommend you know pumping yourself up with some yeah positive self-affirmation yeah. so queen you look yourself in the mirror and you just be like you know with your zen ball and you know the what is it the what is the incense the incense burners the incense burners. yes yeah yeah yes and you you say things like you know I'm, I'm exactly where i need to be i'm exactly who i need to be i do not need to right. change for anyone damn right i have the right to be treated treated with dignity and respect damn right and i have the right to distance myself from people and places that make me feel toxic hell yeah mm -hmm. so i need you to just repeat those words in your head if you have stress going to your family's house yeah, just... you guys would be surprised how positive affirmations can just change the whole situation for you yeah i mean it gives you a perspective it's something yeah. that you're acknowledging before you go in like i might be going into a hostile environment but i know what i'm doing is fine and i know people love me for me yeah so guys just before recording this episode i was looking in the mirror and i was like Ooh, <laughs> I look oh good. Like, oh um, my, I would date me. So, like, I'm oh. coming into this episode and I'm like, all right, yeah, I feel good. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, they work for every situation in life. <laughs> so, definitely, holidays, positive affirmations will get you through those holidays. Oh, what a haircut will do for you. <laughs> it's a game changer, man. <laughs> Ooh. Like, mm. is all you got a haircut? That's Does it. she have yeah, an extra package it. in there? Like, <laughs> I even forgot to put cologne on today, and I'm still feeling this fine. So. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but yes, yeah, self, self talk is very important. Um, and then with that also, you can get into your mindset, your mental health, guys. Get into the holiday spirit. Ooh, this is yeah. Awesome holiday. I mean, Christmas music um christmas movies we even have a like there's the one uh christmas uh movie that's um lgbt uh friendly out oh, right now what is yeah. it called the happiest season yes. Do you remember who was in it uh kirsten stewart yeah she's a yeah she was oh, she was one she? of the first ones oh, yeah, okay yeah okay she was an awakening for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I know different cities host different like uh, Christmas light drive throughs but yes. I mean, you can also just drive through neighborhoods and look at people's Christmas lights for free. I mean, bring, bring some hot cocoa with you. Hell yeah. Crank the tunes. Nothing makes me happier around November, December time than having the fireplace going, mm. putting on a Christmas movie and the TV, having my hot cocoa or my whatever drinking beverage I have at the time, and then just, you know, cuddling with my yeah, And you got the blankets piled on. Yes. And oh, it's so good. Yes. So Happiness. good. Yes. Yeah. And then, I mean, I, you all know I work at a, a liquor store. I'm not promoting drinking or anything, but like another way to get into the holiday spirit is to get into the uh, different seasonal drinks. Oh, yeah. Eggnog. You know, you got eggnog or, you know, during fall time, you got Oktoberfest beer and then okay, you got yeah. um, ciders and... There's a handful big, of different, yeah. yeah, handful of different, like apple cider, hot apple cider is have definitely you, a holiday drink. Have you had mold wine? No, I just learned about that the other day it and I was like, really good. I was like, you're drinking moldy wine? No. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked what? me that at work and I was like, you drink moldy wine? Because I'd never mold heard of it. Wine. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. Mold wine is spelled like this, guys. Okay. Yeah. It's it's super sweet, right? Uh yeah, it's I tried it for the first time. It's something that we don't have here in Texas, just so you're aware. Um it's a little too hot here. Like right now it's November as the time of this recording, it's November 27th. 
and it's 50, 60 degrees outside. So. Yeah, I'm wearing a jacket, but it's literally just because it's cold in here. Out yeah. there, it's fine. It's fine. I can be out there, no problem. Yeah. So we don't get cold enough to where we heat up our wine, mm-hmm. but it's a warm wine. It's sweetened. It's really, really good. I had it for the first time at the Dallas Arboretum, mm-hmm. so it was it was. I was I was heard good things about it, but yeah. yeah, I'd never heard of it. I think I someone asked me for it at least a week ago. Oh, yeah. funny. Yeah, so that's funny. it's a very new word to yeah. me. Apparently, it's yeah. a big thing up north. So I can see that it gets yeah. very cold up there. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, get into the season, guys, because you need you need as much happiness and uh, and and self prep and yeah, um, good vibes, good vibes all around. Yeah, that's it, yeah, around this time in general, because. Well, when you're there. <laughs> all right. So we're all prepped, right? Yeah. We're either walking out the bedroom door because the party's downstairs or we're getting in the car and we made it there, right? Yeah. What do we do now? Yeah. So while you're there, if you're in some type of hostile environment, um, the best thing you can do, and I'm, I'm going to sound a little hypocritical here, uh, you got to definitely speak up for yourself or set boundaries when Said boundaries is yeah. yeah definitely the words i would have used so when when insensitive statements or actions kind of cross your line um one of the best uh quotes that i heard while doing this research was um the quote saying please don't make comments like that they're painful and they make me feel unwelcome here and to me that was such a good very quick easy yeah like that that's it's not going to ensue any kind of an argument yep. Like you're speaking your opinion and you're speaking your your feelings, and if they have a problem with that, then it's probably just time to leave at that point. But yeah, that's a I think that's a nice like firm yet simple way of just getting your feelings out there and cutting off that conversation. Yeah, and demanding respect I for mean, sure. Like like we said, you are the person you are supposed to be. So I mean, don't let other people shrink you into something that they want to mold you into, right? Yeah. Um. One. um Another thing that you could, I mean, try to do while you're there is avoid relationship talk if uh, it creates tension or makes you anxious. Yeah. Uh, One of the things that I do when I go um, visit my very religious family back home, um, uh, usually they start with my younger sisters. My grandparents will start asking them about friends and boyfriends, and I know that's my cue to go find something else to do. Hey, hey, hey. I remove myself from the situation because okay. it's not something it's not something that I want to talk about. It okay. does make me anxious and uncomfortable. So I- instead of being in that situation, I'm just going to, you know, go get some fresh air outside or, you know. Got you. Yeah. Yeah, find something else to do, leave the room. Yeah, yeah, place. avoid yeah. the relationship talk or change the subject that works really well especially with you know, she, Lindsay does it with her grandparents, but it works also really well in a um, a boss environment. Whenever mm-hmm. you're at a Christmas party, drinks are flowing. Maybe they want to ask you, uh, you know, if you have someone at home, your family, or or what they want you to talk about your family. There's there's ways to divert the conversation. Of course, you know, yeah. get it back to work or whatever you need to do. Yeah, yeah, you got plenty um plenty of excuses if you need to find time alone. Like if you are in a home setting, you can offer to take uh, the dog for a walk if there's a dog to be walked. You could offer to take the trash out. Oh, yeah. um, or even just a simple like I need to go get some air real quick like you know it's, it's hot and stuffy in here there's a lot of people in here so at the, we might have to cut this out at the risk of getting demonetized for the stoners of you out there you know what I'm talking about <laughs> go take a walk because <laughs> that's one of the major things you do whenever like you're you're done with your food or you're about to eat some food about and they're to like dinner's it. gonna be ready in about 15 minutes I'm gonna go take the dog for a walk real quick yeah, we're just gonna we're just we just wanted to get some fresh air yeah right? you know you, you gotta burn the metabolism a little <laughs> bit so. Bur- there is burning involved yeah <laughs> tons of it <laughs> so yes I mean oh man just think like a stoner and figure yeah. out how to excuse yourself for just you know you just need 15 20 minutes you know and get your woosa yep. back right and then reemerge. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i mean we so those are the three we have right now is a big one speak mm-hmm. up for yourself guys set boundaries that's that's huge um avoid relationship talk if you need some time to find you know if you need to find some time to be alone take Plenty it good, pick one yeah yeah um the other one i think is really really important is you need to make sure your support system's on deck, which, however, that looks. Mm-hmm. Um, for some of us, I am lucky enough now 
took a while but i'm lucky enough now to have a chosen family Mm -hmm. whom i love we have a we have a group chat between us um that i think it's what like eight nine ladies or something like that yeah 12 there's 12 of us there's 12 oh shit yeah, there's about eight, <laughs> nine of us that are consistently <laughs> talking go. in it, but there are 12 members in that group chat. <laughs> so, yeah, we have a group chat with 12 people. I say ladies. There's one guy. There's one but, guy. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Hey, Mario. <laughs> yes. Love you, Mario. But, uh, yeah, there's we have a group chat. We're very supportive of each other. Um, obviously, this is kind of my queer family as well. Most of them are uh, of, of the spectrum. I think there's only two straight people in that group chat. So, but, like, huge allies. Hell, yeah. yeah. So whenever I'm feeling some type of way or anxious or I want to complain about something, these are the people that I immediately start sending paragraphs Yeah, well, I mean, if you're sending a message to 12 people, odds are one of them (laughs) is going to answer. Someone give me a virtual hug, please. (laughs) Someone help. I'm dying. I was stuck out. I was trapped outside work the other day in the pouring rain for three hours because I locked myself out of my car. I just wanted to talk to somebody. And sure enough, two people were awake at that time. And so I was able to get a little bit of support. Vent it. So yeah, yeah. You, you have them on deck. And that can also just be like for a time when you're there, but then you're going to need a little de-stressor afterwards too. So set up a time to meet up with your uh, your chosen family or your friends. Uh, celebrate holidays just with them. Or if you're out of town, make sure that you have them in your phone. You tell them what you're doing, where you're going to be at. Hey, you might not hear from me from this time to this time. Oh, yeah. That way that if they, they need to check up on you, then they know when an appropriate time to start reaching out to you is. Yeah. Yeah. No, having your – and it doesn't even have to be a friends group, guys. This could be like maybe a – maybe you have a gay aunt – or maybe you just have it's the some, cousin yeah. for me. Oh, the gay yeah. cousin, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, you just have someone that you know can kind of be there to be like, you know, you're fine. Don't, it's it's okay. Fuck your family or yeah. whatever. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got on the the step family side. I got the gay cousin, and on my family family side, I got an ally cousin where he's just like, let's let's go take a walk. Hey, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Let's take a walk. All let's right. go take a walk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, actually, now that because we've. Uh, in in our friends group, we have started doing a uh, basically a friends giving and a gathering for Christmas every year. We it just started happening randomly. I'm not sure why. So it's nice to just be in an area where I know no gay bashing is going to happen. Don't I have know. to worry about hurting anyone's feelings. Yes. So I mean, it's it's liberating whenever mm-hmm. you can be. So yeah, organize it for yourself. If you don't have one yet, just reach out to your closest friend or two friends or whatever it is, yeah. and get together, watch movies in your PJs. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Popcorn, hot chocolate, guys, yeah. in the season. Yeah, but that leads us to. I mean, we talked about the support system. So when things do go bad. <sighs> That's what, what's the saying when shit has hit the fan yeah what do you do yeah i it's may just be me personally but every time i go to a public event or some kind of get together i always have an exit exit plan strategy in my back pocket oh yeah any anything yeah. even dates guys i used to that's oh, a big date. thing yeah have an first exit date, strategy I, y'all first date lunch because you can have anything <laughs> after lunch like i always did lunch for first dates just in case i wasn't feeling it and be like oh yeah i actually have to go head to this other thing you know i just had a small little lunch break yeah during the day yeah yeah it was coffee for me let's go get coffee yeah. oh that's a, that's yeah. a, i don't yeah. like you coffee. don't like coffee. yeah, yeah so i mean we can, we can go get some lemonade <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah always have an exit strategy if if you need to not be maybe you just don't want to be around um your family for that long or the people you're going to see for the holidays for that long um so if you work in the service industry pick up a shift pick up a holiday shift Um, do maybe the night or the morning they also do tons of um holiday positions like you know at different especially packaging delivering or just any store in general yeah they do holiday employees so you could just work through the holiday uh, hours and then that's it get you some extra money get you some extra money yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, they also have volunteer options, too. If money's not, like, a, a thing that's going to drive you, if you just want to volunteer for, I don't know, the soup kitchen, or maybe they have a some type of holiday or, party. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just, Christmas pageant, whatever it is. Yeah, and just yeah. have a set plan that you're like, well, I have this obligation. I said that I, I would do this. Go. Like, and then this is one I use all the time. Yeah, I really got to go take my dog out. Like, <laughs> she's, she's just been inside for hours now. She's, she, she can't hold her bladder. Like I've been here way too long. Way too I long. Just, I that, really, we had a great time, and I'm just, just like, it's so nice to see you. Yeah, but dog, yes. got to go outside. 
You yeah. use that as an exit strategy. I All like it. All the time. I love, I love my dog. <laughs> she's, she's the best thing ever. She, I mean, she's excited to come home to, and she gets me out of some really nice. uncomfortable things. Nice. So, yeah. Good stuff. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, have an exit strategy if things are going bad. If maybe, maybe you're... Someone of the member of the family, you know, just said that's some gay shit or whatever it is. Just- <laughs> <laughs> and you just got to go real quick. You also, it is an option to just leave. Yeah, You true. do not have to explain yourself to anyone for any reason. Just yeah. Get up, pack your things out of there. Yeah, no, that's a that's a huge thing. Or you could explain yourself and being like, guys, you made me feel unwelcome here, so um, I'm gonna just excuse myself. Y'all have a great night. Yeah. Um, good, go. Yeah, happy holidays. Be around someone who's supportive. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so definitely, um, exit strategy very valuable. Uh, and then there's also other things too, guys. If it's getting really bad. Um, Maybe your mental health is not where it needs to be. Maybe you're just you're starting to have thoughts you shouldn't be having. Or the just, holidays are a really rough season for mental health. Yeah, you're just stressed and anxious. Yeah. There is a shit ton of hotlines. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna list them down below. But I mean, we can go over a couple here real quick. I mean, we Trevor Project. We talk about them often. National Suicide Prevention Hotline, Trans Lifeline, Crisis Text Line. NAMI helpline. Haven't mm-hmm. heard of that one, but and then the peer listening line. They have different hours you can call. Again, we'll hook those down below. And they also have an LGBT helpline. Yeah, so. guys, and these are people who are literally standing by the phone to you know help you out to be your you know your ally if you, maybe you don't have one. So mm-hmm. yeah, and there's 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 so much help out there, and unfortunately, suicide rates are really really high during the holidays. So y'all reach out to anybody for anything. Um, even if you feel like it's nothing, it's better to catch it before it turns into something. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really sad fact, but yeah. 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 Um, and then most of all, above all, above anything else, I just need you before you decide to do anything drastic or make any decisions that are going to permanently affect you. I need you to realize that at the end of the visit, at the end of this holiday, you get to go back home. You get to be around the people who love you. Yeah, like maybe your sniffing another couldn't come with you. Guess what? You get to go home to them at the end hey, of the night. Yeah. So it it's gonna it's gonna turn out all right in the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or for the, me, holiday, the holidays are just a, a handful of days. Well, for Denise, they're two months. But <laughs> you, for most people, the ho- the holidays are about two four days. You know, so you you guys can power through. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, guys. So get into it. Celebrate. I understand it can be a little stressful being here especially if you have a family that you know kind of gives you a little bit of the anxiety but you you shouldn't let someone else affect your good time so i agree i agree yeah. so now we're gonna get into our favorite part of the Woo! coming the out podcast. stories yeah Yay. yeah um did you want to go first or do you want me to go first um it doesn't matter to me okay come on it's fine. All right, so um, we referenced a couple episodes back how one of my favorite Instagram channels decided to do some coming out stories on their uh, feed for National Coming Out Day, and I've been just saving them. Yeah, so, yeah I, I enjoyed those as well. So. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so this one is being told by Pre... Press... Appreciate? Appreciate. <laughs> that's that's clever. At appreciate. That's ah, that's clever. We're gonna put it up here. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> that that took. I was like, oh, uh, that's no. Yeah. Okay. That's that's yeah. Good one. Kudos. All yeah. right. So we'll jump in. My coming out story is simple and complex all at once. I've been a Christian my entire life. I grew up in the church, and it was all I knew. I have always felt different, though. I knew in high school that I was attracted to women, but I thought that my family and my religion would hate me. I went to college, and I met so many really cool LGBTQIA plus folks. And folks. folks. I like how you said that. (laughs) (laughs) That's the way you said it. (laughs) True. Um, And thought maybe it was time for me to fully embrace myself. However, I wasn't ready quite yet. I still had this deep-seated fear that I somehow was going to lose everything by being who I truly was. Mm, I, I could, get you I, there. Yeah, I could relate to yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Right, like you know, you know people who are who are of the spectrum, and you're like, "Good job," but I can't I do can't it. Do that? Yeah. How yeah. do you? How do you do that? Yeah. yeah, I feel that. All right, so I graduated, started my first grown-up job. Kudos, and really struggled with who the heck I was. Mm. Fast forward to 2020. 
the little old pandemic came along and I was forced to be inside with my thoughts and just myself for the first time in a long time. Oh, yeah. I, f- I feel you on that one. That that pandemic was rough for them, them oh. thoughts. Oh, hell yeah. Like, you're by yourself on top of that. There's a lot of fear and panic going around. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, that, that was a time none of us will ever forget. All right. So I had the opportunity to parse through what was me and what was expectations of who I was supposed to be. I feel you. Mm. Um, My therapist during this time just told me flat out, what if you're gay? Is that okay? I was faced with this fear of who I was and all the other things. So I slowly started to come out to people over the next year. Overwhelmingly, the response was one of love and tender care for me and who I was as an individual. Mm. I found a super dope affirming church in Dallas. Hey, I love it. Nice. Yep. And now I'm engaged to my very best friend. Aww. Coming out has freed me to be my whole self and allow others to love that, or allow others to love that me too. Mm, I like that. I like that. Good story. That was good. That was good. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So mine, I actually, again, we, I keep coming across these websites that I've, I don't know how I've missed this whole time. This website literally has like over 2,400 coming out stories and it's just oh. called mycomingoutstory.com. So Done. let's hit it. This one sounded um, pretty good to me. And the other thing I liked about these, these are actually um, anonymous. We talk about oh. how we do, we can do anonymous all the time. So all they give us here is um, the gender, the age, and their sexuality. So we have a female, 15, who's asexual. Interesting. All right, nice. So this is their story. When I was very young, I had a queer supporting friend group. So I got to experience with my sexuality, uh, my sexual identity when I was young. I always thought I felt different from most people when it comes to sexual attract- attraction. What amazed me was that I have been able to notice how I felt since I was so young. I didn't do a big coming out story. I told my friends, and if people ask, I let them. I even got around to mentioning it to my parents that I'm ace. I haven't run into any trouble yet, but every day my sexuality gets even more uh, confirmed. And for anyone reading, you're never too young to know what you want. Never let anyone take your power to be you. Hey, I like it. Is that our first asexual coming out story on the podcast? I think so, actually. Nice. I love it. Ah, I like it. Yeah, I like I liked the um the message at the end there. So no, yeah. yeah never was... let anyone take away your power to be you. I like mm-hmm. psh, that needs to go mm-hmm. on a t shirt. I like that. I'm gonna print that, <laughs> send it. <laughs> Um, all right guys well um it's that time where we're about to wrap things up i guess yeah holidays are coming so i hope this podcast kind of helped you know that you're not alone in the world uh we all go through stressful holidays i used to have a very anxious holiday um probably like a decade ago when getting around just because my parents weren't very uh, thrilled with it either, so you're not alone. Yeah, you're not alone, and it there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, things have yeah. gotten better over the years and have gotten a lot easier. So no, one of your big main main points last year was that you got cologne. I right? got cologne. For the yeah, first time. That's, it's a yeah. I things. didn't even ask for it. Like my sister just was like, "Here, I thought you might like this," and I was like. She's like, I know it smells great, right? And I was like, it does. I can't wait to wear this every single day. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, guys, just you you take the good things, you uh, focus on them, and you prepare for the stresses and just, yeah, know that yeah. you have a, a, a community that backs you. Yeah, and you are. all in all, guys, y'all just y'all just have a happy holidays. It's it's the most wonderful time of the year, so you know, act like it. Let's, Damn let's, right. Let's have a good time. Damn right. So, if you made it to the end of this podcast and you liked what you heard, you want to support your 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 us us <laughs> uh, your us yes your us yes yes. Um, go ahead and do us a big solid and hit that subscribe button. Yes, subscribe it, like it, comment down below. Let us know what you guys thought. Um, we've kind of been uh, dabbling a little bit with possibly bringing a guest on the show. So yeah, I would love we that. We would love if you guys want to comment down below if you want to if you want us to bring a guest on board. Yeah, true. And also for the comment section, guys, I mean, throw what do you do for for holidays? Is there anything LGBT friendly that we missed that mm-hmm. maybe you have some advice for others? Um, the holidays, like I said, it's only twenty four percent of us feel like we could be ourselves uh fully so this is this is our chance as a community to kind of come together and be like hey 
Yeah. This is how I deal with it. So if this is a little advice on my life. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, y'all feel free to take all the um, hotlines and stuff that we're gonna link down below, and y'all post them on your own social media. Y'all yeah. share them everywhere you possibly yeah. can, because just because you're not struggling doesn't mean that someone else close to you isn't. So. Yeah, damn right. And feel free to share this video. I'm sure there's yeah. someone uh, who doesn't that you know who doesn't like to go home for the holidays. So. Um, yeah, maybe we can help entertain them while they're damn right passing time. All right, guys. <laughs> well, happy holidays from Happy Holidays. Born this gay. Woo. Yeah. Uh, y'all have a good day and or a good couple weeks, and that's it. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. I'm Denise and I'm Lindsay. We're born this gay. Mm-hmm.